Thomas is the disciple known in the New Testament as the one who doubted the resurrection. And I'm sure you heard many sermons or read many reflections saying that doubt is not really a sin. We should not be too harsh on this doubting Thomas uh, because doubts often lead us to a deeper faith and renewed spirituality, which is all good. However, something changed in the last few months, a year or so. Uh, we discovered new words, new expressions like fake news, alternative facts. Uh, we discovered the existence of people who are paid to create and spread conspiracy theory on social media everywhere. Uh, we have seen many politicians uh, and spin doctors uh, taking a very bad news and try to present it as something that is amazing and wonderful. And, and we discovered that the problem these days is not to doubt but not to doubt enough. That's the problem. Uh, believe me, trust me, are the motto of con artists. And we discovered that there's many around us that using this, this kind of language to, con to, to convince us of their agenda. And in this context, we come a few days after Easter and people ask us, still ask us, said, how can I believe in these things of resurrection? You know, he was really dead and now he's alive. Biology does not work that way. You know, it, it sounds like a very good story uh, created by the disciple to, to maintain their movement, maintain some momentum, but does not make sense if we doubt a little. And this is how we can see Thomas, like many of us. Someone who seems to have a lot of common sense, a no-nonsense guy, you know, and a man that, a disciple that may be saying out loud what the other disciples are scared or embarrassed to, to say uh, on so many occasions. The Thomas say things that kind of shock us, but might if we were in his shoes uh we might be similar no but just imagine his friend came and said well we were by ourselves the door were locked and then jesus showed up it was him and and, and thomas said well that's that's hard to swallow man you know it's, do you have some proof do you have some assurance Thomas, like many of us, want to see for himself. It, it, it makes me think of, for example, after um, a tragedy like uh, a plane that crashed, uh, many members of the family wants to go on site or see some debris and they would say that brings some closure to him, that seeing will help us, will help them to, to move on. So, so Thomas says, he, he does not says no. He's not close to the good news of resurrection. He's just need a little more to believe. He need the same experience that the disciple, other disciple had to see him. Well, eventually a little later, Jesus shows up and Thomas happened to believe. Maybe the struggle Thomas add is once again like many others this accept to accept the transformation from Jesus to the risen Christ last week uh, I spoke about Mary who when she see Jesus she believe she see the risen Christ she believed that she will resume her life as as usual and, 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 and continue what she was doing with Jesus and Thomas is a little similar want to make sure that it was his body that was Jesus body he wanted to, to see the, the, the holes and nails and 
but resurrection, as the Gospel of John really wants to highlight. It's about transformation. It's about change. It's about being different and to accept this different, this transformation. And it's a struggle. This concept is a struggle for us because when it comes with Jesus of Nazareth, it's easier. He's a man that lived 2,000 years ago. He was a great teacher, a man full of wisdom, full of compassion. He said, love one another. That's, that's fairly easy to understand. When it comes to the risen Christ, it's a little more difficult. We, we ask, well, how this resurrect things works? And, and, and then we have to ask ourselves, do we really believe this? Like we have been told, but really believe this? And if we're not sure, does it mean we're a bad Christian? And, and what about today? You know, we can say, well, 2,000 years ago, maybe they believed that kind of things. But with the knowledge we have today, how is it? How is it? How can we understand and accept this? Some would say it's a mystery. Well, yeah, it's a mystery, but it's difficult to, to continue or fade on. It's a mystery. You have to accept it. So it makes us unsure. And it would be nice if we could have a little more information, if, if we have some proof. But we forget that the risen Christ is not one person in history. It's the experience of Christ, and this experience is different than experiencing meeting one to one and person to a person. Christ and what we have here in this text is Christ is, if I would say, in the business of finding people where they are. Uh, there's different ways to reach out for different people. Thomas is not criticized by the end of the story because he wanted some, some a little more proof. No, Jesus provide the risen Christ provide those those proof, as different experience for Mary, different different experience for the beloved uh, disciple in John's Gospel. And. We experience the risen Christ today differently. For some, it's reading old stories uh, from the Bible. For others, it's personal experience. Others, it's community that maybe helped them in the very difficult time. So no matter the experience, it's, our call is to be open. Open to be awakened to the wonder of the presence of the risen Christ in today's world. And that's what the beautiful part of this text, why this is so important, this text to be preached and repeated year after year. That's all for today. Once again, thank you for watching. I remain Stefan Vermet, the lectionary man. And until next time, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.